guys, I'm Kate. Welcome back to my channel. And for the past 31 days, I have been changing a couple habits here and there in order to become a better, happier, healthier version of myself. In another video, I talked about starting my 2020 goals or resolutions in December, and now it's the end of December. 2020 is here. Oh my god. So today I want to talk about a habit that has really made a difference in my life so far in as little as a month of doing it and that is reading before bed each night and not allowing myself to look at my phone those two together, right? Okay. This was partially inspired by the fact that I would often be exhausted, get into bed, and then like almost immediately turn around and look at my phone and just scroll for hours. And I was tired too. Like my eyes were trying to send me all the signals that they could, that it was time to be asleep and not be doing what I was doing. And yet my mind was just going through everything. So I wanted the distraction of the phone to combat that, even though I was exhausted. But of course, by staying up later, I was making myself more exhausted. Okay. I knew it wasn't healthy. I've always known for as long as I've done it, that it's not healthy. That's one habit that I want to change, right? Well, 2019 also saw one of the worst reading slumps of my life. I think the worst reading slump since I left university. And it wasn't for lack of trying and by that I mean I started a lot of books but no matter what I did for four months I think I could not actually finish any of the books that I started. And thankfully I'm out of the reading slump now but I think some part of me is still really scared that it's for some reason gonna happen again. So it seems like the perfect marriage sort of switching out my phone habit with reading more books habit. You know, kind of like someone who's addicted to smoking will substitute cigarettes with like a patch or chewing gum or something in order to sort of wean themselves off of the bad habit that they've created. That's what I was attempting. Today is December 1st at 8.45 p.m. and it is the start of my reading before bed experiment. I'm actually getting an earlier start because I'm exhausted for some reason. So I figured why the heck not. FYI, A Game of Thrones has 33 hours and 49 minutes of listening on it. Oh my God. <laughs> so I guess I should probably get started now. A Game of Thrones, book one of A Song of Ice and Fire. By George R. R. Martin. There's a prologue. Also way my Royce asked with just the hint of a smile. <sighs> Daddy's head. It was also that night that I realized I didn't have my system perfectly fleshed out because if this was indeed an experiment, then I should have some means with which to measure my progress. So basically, I wrote down on this little note card that was near my bed. I tracked basically when I started reading, when I was basically about to fall asleep and therefore stopped reading, how many pages or minutes I got through and how many times I was distracted by my phone. Tonight we're switching it up, Death by Darjeeling. I'm on page 21. This system worked for, you know, three days, but it was on the fourth day that I realized if I was going to keep this up, I should probably use something not note cardy. <laughs> <laughs> something longer, something a little bit more legit. So I went over to my computer, opened up Excel, made myself a spreadsheet and printed that sucker out. I kept this by my desk and each night I filled it in. The only times I wasn't filling this in were when I was traveling where I would then record it in my notebook and then move it over to the sheet later. But speaking of traveling, <laughs> the first time that I traveled in December, I was actually going to Disney World with a friend that I hadn't seen in a really long time. We were going to be spending five nights and six days together doing all sorts of Disney things. And I was nervous that I wasn't gonna be able to keep up with this habit. It's not just because this was a new habit I was trying to form or a habit I'm trying to kick or whatever, but also because travel in general disrupts my system enough that I just get off schedule. I get off routine. Anything that I'm trying to make progress toward, I often stop making progress on. I was very, very scared that that's what was going to happen here. And to my great surprise, it did not. So I already put my little Murphy style bed up and Christiana's left, so I'm gonna be in her bed, but I'm about 
halfway through Death by Darjeeling. And something I've noticed is that I didn't get on my phone as much while I was reading before bed each night. I think partially because I was so exhausted from the day that once I had my book out, I was just like, this, this is it. This is all I'm moving. But also because Christiana was here and even though I did not tell her anything about my reading experiment, didn't even mention that I was trying to change this particular habit, though we did talk about other habit changes. <laughs> Uh. So she had no way of knowing if I didn't do the thing that I said I was gonna do, but the fact that she was here and I just had another presence, it's like it was another thought that went through my head when I attempted to reach for my phone. For me, something I struggle with is like mindless eating where I'm just eating because I'm bored. Oftentimes when I'm in bed before I've pulled out the book, I just turn to my phone because I'm bored and I want something to entertain me because how could I possibly sit with my thoughts or something, you know? Which is crazy because as a writer, oftentimes sitting with your thoughts is where you get the best ideas. We're just gonna continue to see if I can kill this phone before bed habit. <laughs> it needs to die. That was more demon-y. I'm actually kind of impressed with myself. Screw you, phone. <laughs> no, just kidding. I love you, baby, too much. That's the problem. Okay. I mean, there was one night on the 10th that I fell asleep so quickly that I didn't even read, but nor did I pick up my phone. So I'm counting that as a win. And then when I returned home, it was actually easier to pick up the habit again because I just kept this sheet of paper by my bed. So I saw it each night. I think what also helped me is that no matter what, I had to sleep, right? It's not like other habits where there's theoretically a lot of steps that you could fail on. So therefore you don't ever get to the habit part. If that makes sense, like with working out, you have to lay out your workout clothes and you have to lace up your shoes and you might have to drive yourself to the gym and on and on. Any of those steps you could fail at before you even get to the gym part. So it's like easier to quit. No matter what, I had to sleep. <laughs> That was a thing that had to happen. In fact, I thought I needed a lot of sleep, but this was one of the lessons that I learned is that I don't actually need as much sleep as I thought but we will get more to the takeaways later. So once I proved to myself that I could travel and keep up this routine, when I went to Dallas to visit family and to pet sit for my brother, I was able to keep it up in Dallas too. <sighs> In fact, much like everyone tells me, you know, it does get easier. All sort of habits eventually get easier to do once you've made them. And you can even see that on my number of phone interruptions. I only had one day that I looked at my phone in the later half of this experiment compared to three, four, five, six, seven times that I looked at my phone the first however many days. So basically I had trained myself not to scroll endlessly each night. This obviously doesn't mean that my plan is foolproof because I did have one of the nights that I looked at my phone in the later half of the month. And also there was one night when the fire alarm went off at 2.30 in the morning at my brother's complex and I attempted to go to sleep by reading, but then I did end up scrolling on my phone. Later then I actually didn't even go to sleep after the fire alarm went off but I don't really count that because you know what, it worked the first time. <laughs> the first time that night, it did work. So one of my big takeaways from this experiment was that I think going into it, I thought that my two main habit changes were sort of equal, you know, the wanting to read more books and the wanting to not be on my phone. But what I found is that only this one really happened. <laughs> I don't think I read more. I did read a lot in December, but most of my stats on here show like, seven pages on average being read each night because I always was tired when I got into bed. I just scrolled forever. When really forced with a book to keep my mind off of things, it just allowed me to go to sleep faster. The other big thing for me this month was quality of sleep. Now, obviously I wasn't in like a sleep chamber and I don't wear like a Fitbit or a fitness tracker to see how many times I move during the night. So this is all anecdotal, but I'm someone who thought I needed nine hours of sleep. When really it turns out I just need a read before bed, don't look at my phone, solid eight hours of sleep. I felt so much more well rested and I ended up waking up before my alarm a lot of the days and I'm already a morning person so this was crazy to me. Finally, I should also say that I don't think this has actually helped me cut down on my phone time during any other time of the day. It's just helped me at night. For y'all that have seen some of my writing vlogs and writing experiments, I've, you know, sort of reflected back and have noticed how hard it is for me to live in the discomfort and not immediately turn to my phone or the internet when I'm stuck in a story, but <sighs> baby steps. 
baby steps. But now it is time for bed on December 31st, 2019, and I am back to reading A History of the World in Six Glasses. I want to close out this video by saying how proud I am of myself for making this kind of habit lifestyle change ahead of 2020. I'm thinking this is going to be a new trend for me just starting all of my broad sweeping goals in December or ahead of time when I actually first think about them rather than waiting for the new year. But I'm feeling so good about this change, so good about the start of the year, and I know that this is something that I'm going to continue to do just because it truly makes me feel that much better. So please do comment down below, let me know if this is something that you've struggled with in the past. Let me know if you have any habit changes you're hoping to make in 2020. Let me know if you're able to actually read in bed while being sleepy. And also just let me know how does sleep go for you? Is that a weird question? Anyways, thank you guys so much for watching and I'll see y'all very soon with a new video. Bye. Only in a month's time. Only within the month. Only in... So now that I... So once I'd proven myself, so once I'd proven to myself that I could. All right, and then I'll do the rest.